Battle Card is a concept for a project that will be on Kickstarter in the near future. The designer contacted me, asked me if I wanted to take a closer look, an early look, and I thought like, hey, you're David Thompson, you have designed some of my favorite games, of course I want to take an, either, an early look, what a privilege. However, I need to clarify that although this is a review for a project that will be on Kickstarter, this is not a paid Kickstarter preview, it is, as usual, one of my reviews, that's that's all I, all I do these days. I play games and I tell you about. My job is just games, that's what it is. Battle cards, the idea is they are going to create the five print and play games. And I love the idea of print and play, but we know in, ter you know, in terms of like internalized that the name is misleading. You don't just print and play, it should be print, build and play. And sometimes the building can be quite, uh, quite intense. So this would be true, pure print and play because you will print a sheet of paper, you will add some dice, which you probably already have at home, and that's it. Now you're ready to play, print and play. So the project will, I'm told, uh, include five games, so five files that you will then uh, download and you'll print on your own. And each will have a very simple uh, micro word game. Sort of like the, the scope, the span of a postcard game. But those usually you have to glue and cut and things like that. Now, uh, so in this sample that they sent me, they sent me the file for the Balamoro River and the Malayan uh, campaign. So we're in war, World War II. So you print a single sheet of paper and then you will use the dice both as randomizers and as turn track. I say we're going to use this one here as turn track and as units. So, in the Malayan campaign, as you can imagine, well, we're going to have the Japanese advancing and looking very scary, and you're going to set up dice representing units, uh, showing the number printed on the map, and then we're going to have uh, uh, some really scared allied units that will try to delay the Japanese advance for as much as possible. And so we're going to do that. So I did that for that die, representing a unit of strength 4. All the other ones go a strength 2. And then uh, once you do that, uh, once you place your dice, and see, I recommend if you have them, dice that match the color recommended, because then it will also be uh, showed on the combat table, so that makes it very intuitive. You will try to slow down the Japanese advance as much as possible. You will also retreat and as you retreat your uh, dice are combined. So if I retreat a three and a two then it becomes a five. And so your job is to slow them down enough so that you're able to move a unit with strength three or more to Singapore. So you're really just bringing reinforcements down. Uh, each turn starts with an ally withdrawal in which you can choose to withdraw either of your dice that are on the top of the front. There are two separate fronts here. Suppose I decide to retreat this one. Yes, when they retreat, they lose a point. So from four, this will become a three, and three plus two is five, and that's how I did that. So first phase in a turn, the ally withdrawal. Then we have the Japanese advance. If the Japanese have an empty space in front of them, they'll advance there. Booyah. There are also numbers printed there, very tiny, and those are reinforcement. If they had been weakened, then they would gain those points back. That's an enforcement of two, so I don't see much of a reason to fight. The fight there, give them, put a little dent, and they'll get reinforcements right away. Then the then we gotta fight each location that have that have dice of both <laughs> of both um of both sides uh, will have a battle and you the ally player will choose what kind of battle we're gonna fight you choose if we're gonna fight a counter-attack which can be bloody but also can damage Japanese or just defending and so you choose which table you're gonna use then you check if a side has advantage if the Japanese have twice as many strength points in a location as you they have decisive advantage that advantage with a little a little symbol next to a little, little plus. 
If the Japanese have more strength than you, then you use the regular, they have advantage. If the allies have advantage or no advantage, that's what you use. So the situation, the strength ratio slash differential will tell you what happens here, which line you use. Then you roll a die, cross-reference, and that numbers you see there are the number of points lost by each side. Black is allies, you, red is the Japanese. If you defend, if you defend, only you are gonna are gonna lose are gonna lose that uh, lose points potentially, but there's a chance that you won't lose uh, won't lose force strength instead. So you gotta resolve those. Suppose that I decided to counterattack there. The Japanese have the advantage, but not the decisive advantage. I'm counterattacking, so I lose two points, and the Japanese lose one. I lose two points there, and I go to three. And the Japanese lost one, and they go to five. And there, ooh, up there, the Japanese have decisive advantage. I decide to defend. And so I use this table here, defend, decisive advantage, I roll the three, minus two. My forces are annihilated there. And of course, that will be we an advance next turn. So that's uh, that's how it works. Simple as that. Uh, if you're holding Kwantung, there's a little airplane there. After the battle phase, you get air support, which is you can subtract one strength from a Japanese unit. Don't get to attach to that one last long. I mean, the entire game lasts you know five five to ten minutes, uh, and that one even less. So that's, uh, that's the idea. Uh, frankly, I wasn't in love with this one, even as a teeny tiny light super solo filler. Even in, we did, with, within that framework, there wasn't enough. I found that there weren't enough interesting choices. There was a lot of randomness. I felt the game could be summarized to one or two, um, in, into one or two die rolls. The opening moves seemed dictated, and then the intermediate moves and final moves. Also, I just didn't feel that there was a lot to do here. Again, when I'm looking at the postcard kind of game, I don't expect an epic experience, but there are many good postcard games that I enjoyed. This one is just feels way too scripted. Including, I remember a long time ago, I think I did review a postcard game about the Malayan campaign. I seem to remember that one gave me more options. Of course, there was more build there rather than the pure pure print and play. Now we are in Moro River in Italy. The Canadians are pushing the Germans uh, away. And, oh, wrong colors. Uh, the Because now the red is you, is the allies. And we got a five there. And also we have a reserve for the Canadians. And then we have the Germans. We have the Germans... The turn, the die for the turn track also will go on rain or mud, uh, depending the weather can change, so that also marks that. This time we are the attackers and our job is to push the Germans back and take control of that Otoremukia. This time... We start, uh, each round starts with a battle with, with between each uh, Canadian force adjacent to a German force. So at the beginning, that would be all of them. And very simple. During that, you look at the battle and then again, use the same concept of advantage. Uh, see if the Canadians have it, Germans have it, or no one has it. Use the corresponding column, roll a die, apply the result. For example, suppose that I'm resolving that combat, the Canadians have advantage, I roll the two, that means the one withdrawal for the Germans, they lose a point and they withdraw by one, and I lose a point also. And after you, the Germans withdraw, you can advance in the space that they just vacated. They will always, they will always withdraw all three, each has its own path and they only withdraw across that path. And then I resolve the same situation. Suppose that they also lose a point and withdraw. And I decide also to follow. And the same happens here for whatever reason. That's just how it works. 
Now, what are the decisions that you can that you can make here? Because battle, well, that's that's how it works. You can decide whether to advance or not. There are cases where maybe you took a lot of damage and then uh, the Germans retreat and you don't want to follow them because you don't want to be next to them because if you are next to them, you're forced uh, to fight. And one of the ways in which you can lose the game is if indeed uh, two Canadian units are eliminated, so you may want to protect them. So what? So advance you or not, is usually you want to do it, but there is a decision there. Um, also, again, the, the, the Germans, after you decide to advance or not, the Germans counterattack, and they do it using this other table here, so more blood may be spilled. Then you can get some. Then you get to the phase called Canadian preparations, in which you can transfer points from one unit to the next if they are connected by those red lines there. So basically, if they're in the same uh, next to each other on the front. So I could decide, for example, maybe I've given up a little bit on, on this front and decide to transfer a point from there to there. I can also choose to spend my reserves, and that simply I reduce that to increase my forces. So again, a super simple game, which has, however, a little more meat. There are more decisions here than than you have in the Malayan game. Uh, the mud, the end of the round, you roll to to determine the turn, uh, the the weather for the next turn. Mud will give a penalty of minus one to all combat rolls. Uh, making them less effective and so that's the idea you're trying to push them back all the way and hopefully at some point uh, you'll eliminate one of them and you'll take Toremukia which is your your goal here to win the game again you fail if you lose too many units or if it's uh, turn six and you haven't and by the end of turn six you haven't achieved your goal yeah Little more decisions. Now this feels like a micro game, which is also a game. This is a micro game, which is only micro. Um, well, again, the decisions are microscopic indeed, but um, I can decide whether to advance or not. I can decide where to transfer, where to push, and where and where to stop. This one is a little mini filler that I can take out uh, and uh, play in five ten minutes. Uh, this is more effective. I think this is more what they maybe have in mind. I also hope after as the project takes shape, they'll become maybe a little more ambitious uh, because uh, maybe you can have different kinds of units represented by dice of different colors. Anybody who buys this kind of game on Kickstarter probably has a bunch of dice at home. And so it maybe can get a little more tactical. I'm thinking of Strike Force 1. A game like Strike Force 1, you could probably turn it into a single battle card kind of game with the map and the units and the combat table down here. Um, that kind of thing. If we could have just an idea, maybe I hope, and maybe not in this Kickstarter, maybe in a later phase of the project, that we can have true print and play games that have a hex grid, so it has a more of a, of a you have more possibilities for maneuver, and light blue is uh, tanks, and dark blue is, ca is uh, cavalry, or it is infantry, or whatever it is, and pink is infantry, and dark red is tanks on the other side. And D8's artillery, you could do that. So I, th I think it's a great concept. From what I see here, I see a lot of promise and an entertaining micro game. And that's, and that's all, I, all I have to say to you for now, because this is all that I know for now.